All right, let's go through how to hook up a pulse output with digital pulse counter in a weatherproof enclosure to your mechanical water meter. Start by going over to components. Here, of course, is the water meter itself. This is our WMPC. It's our, one of our best-selling meters. Uh, here's the single read switch pulse output that installs quickly and easily to the face of that meter. The digital pulse counter itself and the weatherproof enclosure with the cable gland necessary to maintain the rating where the wire exits the box. Okay, let's start by getting the weatherproof enclosure box prepared for installation. As you can see, this uh, has a groove around the perimeter and there's an O-ring down inside it. This lip here around the perimeter of the box goes into that groove and tightens down onto the seal with these bolts here, these plastic bolts. So once that's together, you'll have a nice weatherproof box. And the display here simply pushes in and fits right in there. It's perfect size. And then once the unit is installed into the face of the box, you need to lock it in there with this locking clip. And that simply slides over pushes down and snugs up against the front and that will prevent anyone from trying to pry that out of there. That's pretty easy. Now we need to worry about the exit for the cable uh, using this gland. As you can see there's no holes in the back of this box that's to maintain the weatherproof rating. Uh, you're gonna have to drill and prepare any of the holes you need yourself but that gives you the flexibility to have it come out the side, the bottom, the top, wherever is best for your application and your installation. We're going to be installing a PG9 cable gland, which as you tighten it, a rubber seal tightens around the cable, therefore making a weatherproof seal there as well. A seal ring and a lock nut for where it goes through the box, and that will make that weatherproof as well. As far as mounting the box to the wall also, let me point out, you can see these holes go straight through and you can actually use them. So the first step is to select where exactly you want the hole for the cable gland for the wire to come out. I'm going to choose the bottom. As you see, it's all symmetrical, top and bottom. Both sides are the same. So either along surfaces, I'm going to put it right in the center. So first, mark your spot. And that is going to be where the center of our hole is for our cable gland. I'm going to start by setting up a piece of scrap wood. Here I have a 2x4. I have it clamped to the table. And that's just to provide a backing for the back of the plastic so we don't break it when we push through with the drill. And I noticed this 2x4 is just a, a bit too wide here when we try to put it on. Can't get it down nice. So basically I'm just going to take a utility knife and carve a little off the corners. Uh, and that should do it. And yeah, there we got a nice flat surface that it's solid. Okay, you can see I'm using a 5 8 inch spade bit. And I start with it, put it on the center. Once the hole started and the tip is through, I want to keep the bit going fast, but not pushing through fast, just the rotation fast. In there. All the way through, and a nice clean hole. And next we just insert the cable gland through the hole but we have to have the seal on it. So put that on, put it through there, and then put the lock nut on the inside, snug it up, and there. Now our box is ready to have the cable coming out of it through a weatherproof outlet. The next step is to mount the box. As I said, you're going to use these holes here. They do come out the back. So what I'm going to be using is a number six pan head. It's important that it's a, a flat head there, not countersunk. 
uh, number six three quarter inch wood screw. If I drop one in here, you'll see it comes out the back side there about a half inch. So I'm going to position my box where I want it, drop a screw in, and simply tighten that down into the wood. There you go. Complete that with the rest. All that's left now is to wire it. So you need the pulse output switch to be installed on the meter if it's not already. Uh, that's very easy. It fits in two holes and you tighten one screw. And then we're going to run the wire up through the gland and attach it to terminals 2 and 6 on the Cal D06. To install the switch on the meter, simply use these two positioning pins here. Sit them into the hole, and it's one screw. And there you go. It's that easy. Okay, now to get the wire into the box, make sure this is loose so that the orifice is as big as possible. Take the two-wire cable, stick it through, give yourself, oh, about five inches of slack, maybe eight inches of slack. And when you tighten this up, it pulls that seal down and grips the wire tightly. If you look at the back of the Cal D06, you can see that the terminals are clearly labeled. And we are interested in number 2 and 6. That's it. It doesn't matter which wire goes to which. Just hook 1 to 2 and 1 to 6 and you'll be fine. So first I'm going to loosen those number 2. And number six. And that way it opens them up enough to get the wire in. Then you simply place one wire into number two and tighten that down. And one into number six. And tighten that down. Okay, so the wiring is complete. Now we just need to close up the box. Make sure the O-ring seats. Make sure the display is upright. And tighten down these plastic bolts here. And there you have it, Cal D06 is installed in a weatherproof box, hooked up to the pulse output switch on a mechanical flow meter. There's a few reasons you may want one of these. One is that if your meter is in a dirty or hard to reach or even completely inaccessible location, you can run the wire. It can be extended up to 2,000 feet with regular thermostat wire, so you can remotely locate this. Where Another is that it makes it easier to read. Now these meters, as you can see, are pretty easy to read, but you do have to take one number off each dial to make the full number. Whereas here, it's just a straight single number full reading. You may have to do some multiplication or division depending on your pulse rate, but if it's one pulse per gallon, then this is straight up your gallon's reading. One of the biggest reasons people like this is it has the manual reset so that if you push this button on the face, it resets it to zero, you don't have to find last month's reading to do subtraction and get your monthly usage. And another final reason is that if you have a whole house water meter, this is perfect for uh, metering your water use then, where every time you change the filter, you just hit the reset button.